And this same Sheikh then went on to actually write a book called Kitab Tawheed because he realized the need that the people have for studying this. Kitab Tawheed means a book uh, of Tawheed, a book, the Tawheed book, the oneness of God book. So he authored a book called Kitab Tawheed, a book that would explain to you exactly this right of Allah Azza wa Jal, La ilaha illallah, how to worship him alone, and all the various different forms of shirk. And wallahi, I'll be honest with you, my brothers and sisters, because we are ignorant of Tawheed, we don't realize how deep this subject goes in almost every single aspect of our life. In fact, every aspect of our life, mm. Tawheed has a foundation in. And then when I started to focus... See, when you read the Quran, actually, when you read the Quran, it, when you, it seems like this whole... The, the way that it comes across is that when... When this book is talking about mushrikeen, it's not the same feeling that you get that what this dude, this guy is talking about mushrikeen and shirk, right? When you read the Quran and you l listen to like how the mushrikeen are being referred to, it just seems like like Muhammad was just butt hurt over people worshiping idols, idols. Okay, it seems like it was just about that, right? But then. But then it seemed like after the Quran, later on, it became a lot about everything else, right? It wasn't, it seemed like for these people, these like idol worship as an example of shirk, is just an example for putting anything else either above God or at the same level of God, right? Allah, like you see, for them, Allah is here and everything else is below. And if anybody, anybody puts Allah here or here, they're doing shirk. And that's not, that's not what it feels to me when I, when you read the Quran, that's not how it feels like that, that was the Quran is referring to. But again, these people are saying, well, this that's just symbolism for something else, right? And when you have these people's interpretation of what shirk means, then, yeah, then all of a sudden the concept of Tawheed and Shirk gets involved in every part of your life. Because what do you care about more than Allah? As I'm, 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 I'm almost certain that based on this criteria, 99.9% .9 of Muslims are doing Shirk on a daily basis, if not an hourly basis, right? Because based on this criteria, if you're just like... If you're going through your day and you're thinking about your family, your work, your career, your wealth, and you're not thinking about Allah, then you're doing shirk, right? You're putting other things above Allah. Because on Tawheed with people in my da'wah, I realized I didn't have to tell them to stop engaging in haram relationships. I didn't have to tell them to stop listening to music. Oh, he's saying like, if you understand Tawheed, I don't need to teach you the other sins. Like I didn't, t I, like if you are obsessed with understanding the Tawheed concept, all the other sins will take care of themselves. This is kind of a little bit similar to what Christians say. Like you just like, because when I ask, ask Christians that if you read the Bible, it seems like it doesn't matter how much you sin. As long as you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you're going to be good. You're going to go to heaven. I'm like, wait, so this, your sins don't matter, right? Because if you sin a lot and don't believe in Jesus, everything is going to be forgiven through Jesus. But if you are the best person possible and do no harm to nobody, but you don't believe in Jesus, according to the Bible, you're going to burn forever, right? So that doesn't seem right. Wait, so like, so what is this obsession with sins? They just should focus on, I believe in Jesus and I'll be good. And the Christians will say, well, if you actually do genuinely believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it would just or naturally reflect in your behavior, right? You would not do sins because, you know, it would just, you know, I mean, you would still do sins. Everybody is a sinner, but it would just be like you could, you could see that you are more of a Christian. You, you have in, invited Jesus into your life more. Like, so it will just... It will just reflect on your life, right? That's the explanation I've got. And this guy is kind of saying the same thing. It's like, I don't need to teach 
people about, oh, this is a bad sin, don't do LGBT, don't do haram relationships, don't listen to music, don't do this, uh, uh, put your hijab on or whatever, because those things will take care of themselves if you just obsess over understanding Tawheed. That's what this guy is saying. I did have to tell them to stop disobeying their parents. Because once... Hold on, let's go a little bit back. To, to focus on Tawheed with people in my da'wah, I realized I didn't have to tell them to stop engaging in haram relationships. I didn't... Haram means sinful for the people who are new here. I had to tell them to stop listening to music. I didn't have to tell them to stop disobeying their parents. Because once the foundation of La ilaha illallah settles in strong, everything else comes easy after. You see a building when its foundation is strong, the rest of the building will stand firm, right? Not necessarily, but okay. But if the foundation is weak, everything else will be weak. All of the other things in the religion, they come as sub-branches from La ilaha illallah. This right here is your foundation from which everything stems from. If this is good, everything else is good. If this is bad, everything else is bad. I ask you now, have you ever studied it? The key to Jannah. Jannah means heaven. So he's saying the key to heaven. This is the key to heaven. The key to Jannah that will get you to paradise. Have you ever studied it? I'm not talking about listening to a little lecture here or studying a very small book here. But I can, can you say you've studied and you, you really know to read? If you say no, I don't and I can't say that, then this is quite alarming. Mm. But it's not the end of the world because you still have a chance to study it. We are offering, inshallah ta'ala, an opportunity for you guys to come and study this little blue book. You may have seen me holding the yellow book before. This is one level higher. In here are three texts, one on Tajweed and one on how to pray. But the main text in here that I really am trying to get through to you is the book called Kitab al -Tuhid. Look, this is big, right? More than two thirds of this book is Kitab al -Tuhid. Yes, ayat and hadith about Allah's rights, about Allah's haqq. If you study this, you can say that you are now starting to really build a relationship with La ilaha illallah the way Allah he wants you to have it. So I don't know any Muslim. Wallahi, I can't fathom. Oh, look at the butthurt Muslim apologist is here. John is here. He doesn't like it. <laughs> he doesn't like it when people attack Islam. He's a, he's a hypocrite. He only likes it when people attack Hinduism. That's why he's so butthurt. Them and imagine a Muslim who is a Muslim. If I was attacking Hinduism, he wouldn't be calling it a rant, he would be like, Yay, Hinduism bad! But Islam, if you say Islam, it'd be like, Oh, ranting, oh, you're promoting Islamophobia. Hypocrite. Uh, Ronald is saying, Threatening children with spending eternity in hell, burning in agony, ain't that some kind of abuse? Yep, it is. And again, I keep telling you guys, as much as I attack Hinduism and this channel, nothing, there's no religion in the world that is as harmful as Islam. Not even close. I mean, imagine a Muslim. Who is a Muslim? Who would... Oh yeah, I like this one. Jai Sri Armin. Yay, Jai Sri Armin. Um, oh, ex-Muslim Uzbek gave us $5 super chat. Thank you so much, ex-Muslim Uzbek. Saying all this shows and confirms that we do not take our morality from a religion, especially Islam, but not exclusively Islam. Exactly. Especially Islam, but not exclusively Islam. I like that. I like the way. Thank you so much for the super chat, ex-Muslim Uzbek. Um, yeah, all right. Understand the weight of La ilaha illallah And he wouldn't take out time from his work To study this He won't take out time from his family to study this It's just 8 days 